got it. <laughs> Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and it's my honor, my pleasure, my delight to have with us the one and only Paul Gilbert. Nick, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to discuss a man who sadly passed away 40 years ago this year, the late, great Randy Rhodes. In fact, I just had the honor of writing this piece, the cover story for Guitar World magazine, which is hitting the streets right now. And Paul was a big part of it. He was one of the guys I talked to about Randy and his legacy and how a guy who only made two records, think about it, with, with Ozzy, 1980 was the Blizz of Oz. Then 10 months later, they recorded the follow-up, Diary of a Madman, 81. Then sadly, the following year in 82, he passed away in a tragic plane accident. And then there was the posthumous live album. And aside from the Quiet Riot stuff, that's it. And still, 40 years later, everyone's talking about him and he's influencing kids who are wee, 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 wee bands, not just old guys like me and not quite so old guys like you, but the new generation and future generations, no doubt. Why do you think that is, Paul? Well, I, I was fortunate. I got to see him two and a half times. A half? A uh, half. Well, the, the, the two times were, were the full live show, the sort of Blizzard of Oz tour. Right. Def Leppard opening up Ooh. with Pete Willis and Steve Clark. Nice. Uh, but that was the first time I saw Randy live. The, the, his playing and the tone were amazing and really left an, an impression on me. And then I saw the Blizzard of Oz tour as well. And the half was he did a guitar clinic in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, which of all places is where I grew up. So that seems to me like a strange coincidence because that's not like a, the common place no. to do guitar clinics for amazing, you know, the groundbreaking rock and roll musicians. Like, oh, let's go to Greensburg. <laughs> but he, he did. So I, I, you know, took the day off school and, and went down and, and saw the clinic as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, that, if that's... The mask, is it really a half? It, it, I mean, it was though, the shows were, were where, where it's at. The shows were amazing. Yeah. That's what really you know, hit me the hardest in a good way. Yeah, I was lucky enough to see, I saw the very first tour of England. I think they came to England first, you know, because that's where Ozzy came from. I was friends with the opening act guitar player, uh, the late, great John Thomas from Budgie. So I went to watch Budgie as well. And then he said, you've got to watch out for Randy because they became close friends. and. When Randy came on, I, I, I was completely gobsmacked. I, I didn't know what I was seeing. Well, I did know what I was seeing. I just couldn't comprehend how someone could meld the classical and the rock with such ferocity yet musicality, if that makes sense. There, there was a really uh, a, a nice way that, that he handled the space. Right. Because although I think there was a keyboard player on, you know, for some of the stuff. Yes. Most of it, wasn't most of, his, most of his drums, bass, guitar, and live. He he would put in the extra fills, and so and, and it was it was a great pairing with him and Tommy Aldridge because Tommy was certainly right. You know, could could put in some extra stuff, and those two together, like the, the, I was in cover band at the time, and we used to our our poor singer and bass player had to endure us overplaying on every song right. after having seen Randy and Tommy. We were like, let's do that to every song. <laughs> you know, we'd be playing foreigner songs and doing all this extra stuff. Because, oh, you know, seeing Randy and Tommy do it, it right. was so cool and so inspiring. I don't know how well it worked in the foreigner tunes, but it worked, <laughs> worked great with the Ozzy stuff. Yeah, and that's funny because that, that's one of the influences he had on me was like when I saw him live, it's like the records were great but he put those little extra things in. And even though a lot of his solos were like obviously composed, he would throw little extra tastes of little more tasty morsels in to make them even more exciting without detracting from the song within a song, which is what they were. He also had the fire breathing guitar sound. Oh, brutal. Which, which to, to me, like you can't stop. And you'd hear it like once in a while, you know, the song would stop and he wouldn't quite get to the volume control fast enough for something. And you'd hear the thing just, oh, yeah! You're going to be howling and screaming, which is wonderful. I mean, the, the, another example is that, like, the, the Ramones live album. Right. The first thing you hear is just a shriek. Right. Because, you know, Johnny Ramone got a little close to his Marshall on, on 11. It just goes, ah! <laughs> and, and Randy had that going on all the time. And the, the, to be able to control that. Yeah, there's an art to Yeah, because it. it's, it's a whole, I mean, it's kind of amazing in a way that, that he came from a classical background, because that's what I've seen as, as, a, as a teacher is like, I'll get the students that came, you know, spent a few years as a classical player, and they won't have developed like the fire breathing guitar control system. Right. Yeah, and, and they're still, you know, playing like, like this, and, and it's, 
you know, it's like, man, you, you, you put that boat in the water, it's going to be a little different. You know, the ocean is a whole different thing than the, the, than the lap pool back at home. Randy was a, a master of, of, of that, you know, of, and, and, it, and the result was so cool because, you know, th he gets the benefit of the fire breathing guitar sound. It's fire breathing and it's huge and that, uh, that was wonderful to hear. Yeah, one of the great things was like, like doing the piece for Guitar World, I talked to, to Max Norman, who did both records, you know, engineered and produced them. Randy had that huge behemoth of a pedal board and Ozzy nicknamed it the chip pan because it sounded like people were frying French fries. Yeah. Like <laughs> chips are the English name for French fries and fr the French didn't invent them, so I don't know why they're called French fries, but anyway. It's sizzling. It sounds like a, yeah, it was, it was a sizzler. Yeah. And he could control it though. And there was a, there was a majesty about that as well. And that, I think that's, I wonder if that's part of the reason he put all those fills in because he couldn't stop. Well, well, the other thing, I want to find out who the, who the live sound engineer was. You know, I, I don't, this is all, conjecture on my part, but right. that, to me that sounded like there was some kind of global harmonizer chorus effect, especially when I, when I saw him on the Blizzard of Oz tour, and it sounded great, and then, like I really wanted that, and in, in a way like the 80s, you know, you go into like the Steve Lukather racks and, right. you know, and this sort of process sound, but Randy had it working just better than anybody at the live show that I saw, and I don't think, I mean, like I got a stereo chorus on my pedal board, which is kind of what he had. <laughs> And it had some nice little warbly, swirly right. thing, but it was different than than that. And I, I'd love to find out. We, we got to research, you know, who, who was who was running the who was at the, the at the desk. No, we should definitely find that out and, and see what the, what they had you know, what they had running. And maybe it's all hallucinating, and you know, it was, it was just his hands. But I, I think it was something. Uh, the interesting thing too, and once again, it's, this is from from John, the the guitar player I mentioned, John Thomas, like Randy's behemoth ch uh, chip pan board. Um, on the first tour, the roadie dropped it and it started playing up. So the roadies couldn't work out what was going on. So John, being a smart guy, took Rennie to some stores and they bought every one of the pedals within the board, you know, because it was all, all underground, effectively, with just knobs on it. But when they put them together, it sounded completely different, even oh, though man. it was in the same order. So they took the board apart and John said a lot of the circuitry was was encased in some sort of epoxy resin. <laughs> and he's like, we, so we didn't know if they'd been modified, if there were if it was just there for, you know, like to keep it safe. It you was know. a small family of weasels living inside of, yeah. of the MXR Distortion so, Plus, and it, it just had a, its own tone, yeah, could so, not be replicated. So was it modded? Did it have extra stuff put in? Who knows? But yeah. uh, shrouded a mystery. Like I say, a lot of it's down to his hands, because like John actually, like Randy would stay at John's house, and he said just hear, hearing the guy playing the electric guitar unplugged with, he still had fire breathing, because of the way he, he attacked, yeah. he attacked. He definitely played with the fire. You know, I feel very fortunate to have, have witnessed uh, Randy close up a couple times. Yeah, I wish I'd have seen that. The clinic sounds amazing. I did get to see, they did a very short um, Diary of a Madman tour stopped after two dates in England. Mm -hmm. But long story short, the lighting company my band Grim Reaper was using, the lights we were using at a, at a very small show compared to them, but we were using the same lights. So they went onto Ozzy's rig and I was friends with the guys, they said, we know you're a Randy fan, get on the truck. So I got to see the sound check. Oh yeah. And they sound checked without Ozzy and they played Diary of a Madman, the actual song. Wow. But, as an instrumental and it was, it was gobsmacking. And actually John always said to me, if you meet Randy, just tell him John says, hey, cause he's a really nice guy. So he walked towards the board and actually went and had a conversation with him, which was really cool. And that's, that's so cool. definitely in my, um, you know, MasterCard priceless list of stuff that happened to me. What impact did he have on you with regards to your playing? That, that's a good question because this is this is a fairly long time ago. Right. And I was thinking like I knew this, this this conversation was coming up, and I thought, should I like try to very quickly study up and 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 learn like the way the songs really go? Right. Or should I just go with like okay, I'm 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 just gonna you know show up to the interview as a 14 year old because that's when I learned the stuff. You know. Right. And uh, I would say one of the things that the, um, since he did the clinic at the music store, you know, I, I wasn't cool enough to, to really, you know, I, I didn't work at the music store, but my, I knew the, the guys that did. Right. And Randy spent some time with them and he showed them how a couple things really went and then they showed me. Ooh. And, ooh. The, and the one that they showed me was Steal Away the Night. The... Uh, <laughs> That arrangement of 
the low chunky notes, right? You know, we get that that thick chunkiness that you can only get from a single low string, right? And uh, and then the higher, more sparkly chords, right? And be able to mix those up. In, in, in a really well composed riff. I think that that's one of the things that I hear happening a lot and it's sort of, it's, it's a great way to use the fire breathing guitar sound. Right. Because you can't get away, like, you know, if you try to play some fancy chord on, with distortion, and same thing, you, you, can, you can like take a piano right. and, and plug it into a Marshall and hit a, a chord, it's just like, ah, oh, it's horrible. It's just the nature of distortion. You really can't get away with anything right, other than right. a fifth or a fourth interval. Or there's just this ugly rub that happens. So the solution is like, well, play it, you know, this part of the chord here, then play the other part se separately. And then the, the, the listener sort of ends up combining them in their head, but they're not actually combined in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like comping, but se separate comping. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, when he's doing like the, I don't know, you know, he's playing a big, <laughs> although that chord's actually, you know, all fifths and fourths. Right. You know, but then <laughs> sort of separates it. Right. And that, that just, just the, actually, it's the technique of holding that together, that dugga, 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 and not having it, you're getting definition out of the A string because the A string can really, right. especially, you know, I got, I got an eight. I don't know what, Randy used tens, I think, but I've, I've got eight. So to, <laughs> to have that not get away from me and just right. get ugly. And, and Randy really kept that tight and together. And then to get, you know, cl clarity out of the big. <laughs> Of course, the harmonics. And, oh, and he was... when I saw Randy, the one he had, it was the it was the one like. <laughs> See, I got to search for it. Right. But he just nailed it every time. Yes. And it was in I don't know. You know, it was going. <laughs> yeah. You it's know, all... look up Randy. He 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 nails it. Where is that thing? Yeah, it's it's all over that. Like that the tribute album is great for that. That you you hear all those you hear all those and, little and things. And they really broadcast it. I oh, mean, yeah. the whole room turned blue when he played those things. And besides, that, of course, you know he did have you know the great like the Diary of a Madman. There, you know, it's like where did the, yeah where uh, do those chords come from? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a, I had a roommate who was into classical guitar, and he was like, oh wait, you know, he found, and I guess it's from a classical piece. Right. I don't, I don't remember which one, but still, like the the the, the intro part, the. Uh, yeah, it's so heavy. And that he was a master of light and shade. He used the full sonic spectrum of the guitar really really well it wasn't just junk 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 but he would he would go high when you didn't expect him to you know things like believer that that riff is just wonderful how it starts on the a and ends up on the b i'm going like i, I knew that when i was 14. <laughs> You know it? Yeah, I think it's this. Just beautiful, yeah. beautiful stuff. I think what are, what are the riffs? The uh, I mean, of course, Crazy Train is yeah. such a is such a legendary riff. Being a teacher, you know, people play that, and, and you just think, oh, they'll 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 get it. That's an easy riff. It's not. No, it's not. You know, and uh, you know, hopefully I get it right. But <laughs> you know, the part that surprised me because I, I I slowed it down. Right. And now, you know, it's ears. So I'm, I, you know, who knows if I got it right? But there's a part where he hits like this kind of like country western, <laughs> and, and, and he hits it twice every time. Like like the. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, how did he get away with it? Because it doesn't feel country. You know, if you, if you just sort of take that little piece out and, and, and put it under the microscope. <laughs> yeah, but, I, you know, with the storage, it works great. <laughs> and, of course, all the... Down, those were kind of a staple, but the people don't do those anymore. But I, I love that. <laughs> Gary Moore and... Yeah, he does that in the Over the Mountains and he goes... 
you get the whammy bar too. Yeah. yeah. And he also does it in uh, I don't know as well, does he? <laughs> The two note one, instead yeah. of the three note. Even Rick Nielsen was doing those in Cheap Trick, you know, right. the beginning of Ain't That a Shame. Yeah, so those, those were, there was something in the water in the, in the 70s where, you know, every guitar player had that lick and then the water changed. And, and it's the same with the, like, Randy's deft use of trills within the harmonic minor as well, which was oh, another yeah. Gary, Gary Mooreism as well. He does it in End of the World. He does that sort of, what is it? <laughs> And Randy does that in um, Mr. Crowley. Something I love, I love like that. The trill. Oh, he's and he was masterful at it. And I love the fact he would take the harmonic minor and just find all the semitones and then trill them. It was a sort of different take on on classical than Ingve. How would you describe the emotion? Like to me, Ingve is like he's he's fighting invisible pirates and winning. <laughs> and. And, R and Randy's classicals is more like, I, I don't know, the, the, like sometimes my, my wife does a lot about classical music. She'll say like, oh, it's the aristocrat, the aristocrat like riding the, the horse on their, you know, on their grounds. Right. They're, what, what do you call it? Overlooking your, you know, your acres of manicured French aristocratic right. before the revolution. And, you know, <laughs> you're sort of, you know, <laughs> I don't know if my vocabulary is failing me, but I, no, have, no, the, I, I have the vision. I, I get what you mean. The powdered wig, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and In 18th century. There's that side of the classical music. And I don't know, somehow Ozzy, you know, is halfway between, you know. Like, <laughs> he's swashbuckling and aristocratic at the same time. I don't know. Yeah, in a, in a very Ozzy sort of way. Randy's stuff had a danger to it, for want of a better word, to my ear. Beautiful aggression. If that's oh, not absolutely. It. There was a, a be definite beauty to it, and, and a like a positiveness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was it, it was uplifting. Yeah. With like, at the same like, time, unbelievably that. powerful. Yeah. And, and I, I like the, the the sizzling thing. You know, I mean, it, it had that throw it in the sizzling oil, and it is, there's that, that's like that's a very physical metaphor. Right. No, it to, is. To, to yeah. The, to the sound. And uh, he had that. There was he was controlling chaos, controlled chaos almost, because like you said, his sound. If you gave his guitar with his pedal board to someone else, they probably wouldn't be able to control it. One of his many gifts. And I love the, f I love the, you know, one of the things I did during the interview was I talked to Max Norman about him soloing. And he said, you know, when it came time to solo, they would leave Randy alone for an hour or so with a loop. He'd go back, say, you read him. Randy's whole goal was to get it in two or three takes, the whole like a whole performance. Yeah. And he said there was a sense of occasion about it. He said, that he goes, yeah, I'm ready. And he would go for it. And he said he would scrap stuff that was perfection because he didn't hit those harmonics you were talking about. <laughs> he said, Max, Max said, you know, I'd sit there going, are you kidding me? You're going to scrap that? And he go, I've got this. And sure enough, he goes, next time, played it even better with the right feel with the harmonic he wanted. And then what interested me, and I didn't realize this, was not only did he double, but he often tripled. And wow. the whole, the whole, his whole object of, tri of doubling or tripling the solo was not to do it an exact replica, but to get the combined beauty of them, like having the ghosts a little bit further back and creating like some sort of weird flanging or some sort of unique like chorusing thing. Because you're never gonna play the same thing exactly the same twice, and they were looking for that beauty. Yeah, that's an interesting sentence. And obviously you've gotta, you, you can't good. improvise. You gotta yeah. know what you're doing. Yeah. To, you know, to be able to triple, to be able, well, to double in the first place and, and then triple that much more, you, you know, you, you veer from the plan and it, it turns into chaos. So yeah. that's, uh, you, you know, what a, what a composer. Yeah, and, and what's funny is you get some guys on the internet have actually dissected some of the solos, like this, this, this guy on the art, Mike on The Art of Guitar, did a little thing about a, a certain section of the Crazy Train solo that he could never get right, and then he analyzed it carefully and realized that he was playing something slightly different on one of the tracks, but they combined together beautifully. That's a he had John Lennonism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two different words and they become a new word. <laughs> now, what would you say would be, this is putting you on the spot, what would be your favorite, as the 14-year-old you, what was your favorite Randy Rhodes riff and why? Aside from think, Crazy yeah, Train, of course. It's probably, I don't know. Right. And, uh, and, and, and sort of fantasizing about the solo in G when it modulates down to... Yeah, it 
Rudy Sarzo, you know, doing that. And, you know. <laughs> Just that whole, you know, that, that was, it seemed improvised to me. Yeah. And then, of course, back to the... <laughs> Gongs is in there somewhere. And Tommy, you know, again, there are those pairings like, you know, Eddie Van Halen, Alex Van Halen. You know, Eddie's not the same without Alex. And to me, uh, Randy and Tommy Aldridge. You know, on that live album, the, those versions, some of the, and, the studio and, ones with Lee Kurz, like you're great. But, yeah, and, yeah. And, and Tommy, you know, I saw him with Pat Travers, seen him with, you know, he's been in a lot of great bands, he's always great, but something about him and Randy. You know, that, that sort of effortless overplaying. Yeah, symbiotic. And, and, and it yeah. worked. You yeah. know, it, it didn't, you didn't see Ozzy turn around and going, like, hey, you're stepping on me. You know, it, right, it, it, yeah, it yeah, all, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it would all, all fit. I mean, that was one of the, like, you know, Rudy was one of the many pe people I spoke to, and he said that, you know, because Rudy played with Randy in Quite, Quite right, right, of yeah. course. He said, but, but when he joined Ozzy for the Blizzard of Oz, you know, for the, sorry, the Die of a Madman tour, he said it was a very different Randy because Randy had become himself. He, was, he said it was almost like the Hendrix thing. Yeah. Hendrix had to go to England with Chas Chandler to become Jimi Hendrix. He said Randy had to go to England with Ozzy to become Randy because Ozzy said, we, we do what you do want. That. Go to England, yeah. Well, we need to we need to become ourselves. Who can we find? So we go. Oh, now I've got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all I that wish, stuff right? before is like, don't don't listen to that. But yeah. now, now I found this other cat, and I'm really cooking. You know. Yeah. Now I'm on. I'm <laughs> on. And the one thing I the one thing I I stole many things from him. And but one of the things I really liked was the the way he would he would mix and match. He like he'd take the natural minor and and go. To the harmonic minor, he did that in the in the Mr. in the in the last solo in Mr. Crowley a lot, you know. But the other thing he did really well was was add the blues scale to the um, Aeolian scale, mode or natural minor. <laughs> Beyond me then. No, so it I'd... was. I, just stole, <laughs> I stole it and didn't realize what was going on. But, yeah. but like the way he mixed and matched stuff, and he would go with the chords as well. So he'd go from F minor to D major, not just stay in there, F minor. There was a thing that he did on, on the uh, unaccompanied solo that always, I, 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 on one hearing, because I, I didn't have a recording of it, I just heard it live. Right. But I think he, I think it might be on the tribute records, because I, I, it was on bootlegs, because right. it was like King Biscuit bootlegs. But I don't even know how to play, but it's like Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it was real like kind of classical that hardly ever works. Right. Like you know, I mean cuz cuz that's the thing like what what Randy and Ingve kind of started, you know, other I you know, including myself, but you'd go, "Oh, okay, well I'm going to learn some Bach piece and, and and take it out on stage." Right. And you could just feel the whole vibe deflate. Right. You know, you're doing the, you're doing your rock show, everything's going great, like, "Okay, now I'm going to do my you know, you know, and and all of a sudden you feel it just fizzle. Right, right, right. Not sizzle, fizzle. You know? Yeah. And uh, but somehow when Randy would do it, it it it, 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 it kept that energy. So I don't know how he, he, he I mean maybe maybe it helped that it was un, unaccompanied because right. sometimes if you if you put classical uh, harmony to a rock beat, it's it's sort of it's sort of becomes not discom right because discombobulated. You know, yeah. it shouldn't have two and four on, on the right. But, but what was the? Um, you know, he also had that that one with the drums that he I think he wrote it was like the. <laughs> So something like that. That actually, that, that was what, uh, I don't know if anybody knows my old Racer X stuff, but right. that, that kind of open string. I don't even know what the notes are, but, right. but I, I started messing around with that and I came up with, on the first Racer X album, a song called Loud and Clear. Gotcha. And again, I, I didn't know scales or anything, so I'm just using frets. Right. You know, but it was something like uh, that was that was my lick. You know? 
And that was very Randy influence. That was just me trying to do my version of that, that, that instrumental that he did. And it was a... I don't remember the rest of it, but that... Uh, thank you, Randy. Yeah, and if you wonder why I'm not playing, folks, this is why you've just witnessed it. Man, it's a pleasure watching you play always, my friend. Now, talking of going off the Randy subject for a second, that guitar is beautiful. That's nice of you, thank you. Is that, is that a new acquisition? This is fresh, fresh from the Ibanez Custom Shop. You know, I've been collecting some of the old Ibanezes from the, the 70s, and right. they had a, a model, the, the, it was like the, the Studio Series, the, the ST300. And it's got that laminated thing to it. Right. And I don't know if it's an interesting story. It came from Russia. And really? I, 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 I bought it, and, and the guys in Russia were like, oh, you were, you, were, you know, I can't do a Russian accent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the email anyway. The so email doesn't have an accent. But right, right, they, yeah. They said, they said, like, you know, we're, we're happy that it's you, and, and we'll just send it to you if you, you know. So, you know, thank you guys at the Russian music store for sending me the ST300. It was a really nice guitar. And I thought, you know, I, but I'm, this is my model fireman. It wouldn't be cool to have like a fireman version of the right. ST300. And so they uh, they made it. I, I put my slide magnet on as usual. Of course, of course. And uh, a couple of DiMarzio, uh, what was PAF classics. Right. You know, knob in the in the wrong places. I like it. Those skunky stripes are beautiful, though. And it's 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 working. It's a. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's ash and, and maybe maple in the middle. Oh, I was going to ask you if it was, yeah, looks so it's, like it's, different it's, it's yeah. weighty, but not too right. weighty. But thanks for the You've got a nice guitar, too. Yeah, straight off the wall at the new store. Just went. Because so I was going to use the Randy guitar, but I realized it was tuned to E flat. Oh, so. look at that. Wow, you got a left handed one. That's yeah, killer. Yeah. It's a great guitar. Love it. Anyway, Paul, I know you've got a clinic tonight and you've also got a masterclass tomorrow, so I'm going to let you go. But before you do, I'm going to ask you a huge favor. If you could play a Randy Rhodes inspired Paul Gilbertism, similar to what you just did, and play a site, that would be fantastic. Be believe it or not, I, I have just thought of something that I think might do that. And that is, I've got a, a Mr. Big song. Okay. Called Green to the 60s Mind. It's got that. Uh... <laughs> That, that intro that right. I'm happy I was able to compose. And the, the problem with the song is it really doesn't have any kind of solo we solo. Right. It's got a nice melody, but it doesn't have like a place where I can, you know, do some stuff. Right. And so and I'm playing instrumentally these days, so it's, I'm playing the... I'm doing all the vocal lines, right. but I still don't have like a thing where I can do something. Kind of inspired by the Randy style of that, like you know, you know, I added a section. Okay. And I, I, I don't know how many, it's like four or five chords: E to C sharp minor seven, right, with maybe a little ninth in it, and then a, a D Lydian, and then an A major, and then a G. Like Lydia, and it just so cycles that. Right. And I kind of bring the band down. And then what I try to do, and it's not easy, but I'll, I'll see if I can do it, is that kind of Randy, like, you know, but I bring it down. Ooh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get like halfway to fire breathing and just with my hands Pull try to back. keep it under control and make those changes. So wish me luck. So like, good one, luck. Two, three, four. <laughs> May he rest in peace and continue to influence. Paul, thanks for taking the time, my friend. I really Nick, appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Rock and roll. Rock and roll indeed. Yeah.